So Memorial Day Murph, it's a mile run, um, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and another mile run. I did that like 20 hours fasted like two years ago. What? Best time of my life. Wait, you fasted for 20 hours before you did that? Yeah, I'm not saying that my my blood sugar was fantastic. I mean, it was through the roof, just cortisol, you know, stress. But man, I felt great. Did you? I felt great. I had the best time I'd ever had. Man. All right, welcome to Soon to Be Legends. I'm MC Clark. Byron Stankis is the host. Welcome back, Byron. Welcome, welcome back. I was here last week. <laughs> okay. You know you how the so. drops. You know how the drops go on these things, well, right? Like, I don't pay attention to that yeah. shit. Oh, I know. Even when I even when I leave, I'm still here. Yes. That's, it's like the yes. uh, magic of uh, delayed delayed uh, postings. Yes, it is. Hi, everybody. I'm Byron Stankis from Soon to Be Legends. I'm your host today. We are here with Katie Kelly. Hello, everybody. Oh, yeah, that thing is like the five people that watch, so we're good. Hey, that's They're okay. They're going to like that. So that's okay. you're going you're gonna to help us out. So Katie oh, yeah. Kelly, um, you're not really an influencer, right? No. Maybe, no? I, Everybody I doesn't like that word? I say that I hate that word. I think it just has a really negative connotation. I like to say I'm an authority. You're an authority. I'm an authority. Okay, Katie Kelly is an authority on, we're going to say, what, life? All the things. All the things. Life and all the hard lessons learned along the way. Okay, so you have a, you have a pretty big following, which you're going to tell me how to get that. I think I need, just need to look prettier, hey. maybe? Hey, is we that can. It, Clark? <laughs> yeah, we can. I think we need, we can I mean, there's a lot of work pointers. that needs to be done. <laughs> we got to figure out. I don't know. My hair needs to be better. That's you all know? right. We can. We can. I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, thanks. You got thanks. the products going. You're looking yeah. good. Oh, that's just how I woke up. Hey, it is then, not. It, then it's natural. <laughs> it is not. I don't know. This I think you spent a lot of time on your hair. I, hey. I spent. <laughs> yeah. This. This is the money maker. Clark. Hey, oh, ain't no on. shame in that. I don't know. Look good. Look good. Feel good. Do good. That's how much money have we made? Yeah, uh huh. That's why I said it's all in the negative column. That's nobody. Nobody's really counting. It is that. Uh, well, I'm not talking about the economy. Anyway, nobody wants to know about that. <laughs> Everyone wants to know about you. All right. So you have a, a good following of people, and you uh, give advice, and you uh, post pictures of yourself, and you uh, basically journey, uh, post your journey of life. Yeah, it's and basically people are like inspired a, by a that. digital diary. A so digital diary. So I've that's created cool. a little fun community. I like to call it my digital family. Your and digital family. It's my digital family. And and how would they find you on this digital family? Yeah, so I'm really active on Instagram. That's probably right. the best way to get a hold of me. So my Instagram is at, and it's little bit of fit. So it's I, L-I-L yeah. underscore B-I-T underscore O-F underscore fit okay it's a mouthful so, a lot of underscores and we'll lots type, of underscores we'll type that in. yeah we'll put that on for people who see because we have this guy in belgium or this woman in belgium that sees so they make sure that they they, we, they can awesome. read that and then comes i don't know yeah they really are we really do have someone in belgium I, and someone I believe in you. india as well i believe you hey i don't know it but makes the world a smaller place we're all here together yeah they're they're on the podcast version as opposed to the video if we can get the video they'll really like this episode oh, there we go right because we talked about my hair product right and that, that sort of stuff. So let's let's get a background. But you yeah. also have a, a, a another job too. I have lots of jobs. Okay, so you have lots of jobs. We'll get yes. into how awesome all of that is. All the jobs. So I've worked in radiology for 17 years. Okay. I guess that you could call that maybe like my primary job. Yeah. Um, so I work for three different hospital systems in Indianapolis, and now I've done that for a long You're time. Exhausting. That's exhausting. Dude, I love all the things. You My life things? is never boring. So I do everything I love. Let's start with that, okay? Because you didn't st- you didn't come out like this. No, you didn't. I you did were not. born on a little farm or I was. big farm. Uh, no, I'd say mid-sized farm. Mid-sized farm. Yep, small farm here in Indiana. Okay, small farm in Indiana, yep. but it's as mid-sized to the rest of the world. Is right. that how it works? I, I would describe it as that. Okay, yep. so mid size. And you were a little farm girl. Yep, farm and girl. And we say well, born you, and raised. You're a little bit of fit. A little bit of so fit. So you're you are little. Uh, for people who can't see, you're. I'm 5'1", 105 pounds. And it's funny because people who, you know, see your videos and pictures on Instagram right. when, when they meet you in real life, you know, right. we got to use quotes because, right. you know, everything's a digital world. They're like, man, I thought you would be bigger. Well, it's because and all of I'm your like, camera angles are so low. It makes you look right. tall, right? Because I mean, when you're you lift, gotta get your workouts, you're in. doing the workouts. Right. You put them down on the floor, and uh-huh. they're looking up at you, and yeah. they're like, "It's like you're a goddess." So it's right? kind of like Ugh. Roadhouse, you know, where Road they're House? like, like Dalton, okay. you know, the movie, uh, and they yeah. tell him that I thought you'd be bigger. I thought you'd be bigger. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, well, that's why it's a little bit of fit. A little bit, not, yeah, a lot of bit of fit. So, Anyways. but <laughs> I, I, yeah, we're, I'm gonna run Fun all facts. over you. I'm gonna run all over this whole thing. We're just gonna it's gonna be a mess. Do it. Okay, so what so you started out on a farm. Yep. So tell us about um little bit of farm. 
Yeah. I so guess, I grew up on a beef dumb. cattle and crop farm here in small town Indiana. Okay. It's all that I've ever known. So agriculture was my first love. Nice. You know, we ate good home cooked food, you mm-hmm. know, since we're kind of getting to the health and fitness thing. Um, you know, and as a child, like you don't really know how to feed yourself. You know, you don't right. know portion control. You don't know macros. You don't know all the ins and outs of nutrition. Right. And, you know, the mindset piece is huge too. So, you know, really like your childhood and how you grow up really affects every facet of your life, you know, up until adulthood. Yeah, I, I have I have a lot of issues. Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> hey, we all have well, bags to unpack. <laughs> yeah, but I don't diary it on the internet. I just, uh, you know, I just cry at home. And I don't even know kind of how that happened. Like the following, it just... You know how they say, you know, follow your heart, do what you love, and right. like everything else just kind of falls into line. Well, that's right. just kind of what happened. It was kind of nice. like therapy for me. Yeah. <clears throat> so like Instagram, I started that. It was, I don't know, it was probably a little over ten years ago. And right, but you yeah. weren't this. Um, lean no, I was cut. overweight. So right. going back, I have ADD brain. FYI, oh, so that's it, fine. Oh, I'm gonna play right so into that. Great, we're a fantastic. Yeah, pair. and whoever, yeah, <laughs> it's like whoever's squirrel. listening. Yeah, whoever's <laughs> listening to this is like, hey, will somebody finish a sentence? That'd be great. Right. Wait. The original question. What was <laughs> what it? What was it? Um. So yeah. So I was an overweight kid. You know, yeah. you didn't know how to feed yourself. Right. You know, I way I had a terrible relationship with food. You know, looking back, right. just. You know, you just keep eating. I have no idea about portion control. You eat good home cooked food. So yeah, overweight kid, basically my entire life. Kids were really mean to me. Were they? Really mean to me. You know, kids are like little savages. Like they don't realize like bullying uh, really weighs heavily on a person. And it can affect you like all the way into adulthood. You know, so you get to that age. I was about eight years old. And I think that's really when it hit me like, you know, my food and body image issues started. By eight? Eight years old. And you were cognizant of that yes. at eight years old? Yes. Oh, wow. So at That's eight, like second I remember, grade. I've always been like an old soul. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. very, um, very self-aware, even from a, a young, you know, young age. Right. So I remember sitting at the kitchen table. I mean, I remember the exact moment. My mom, and she said this out of love, just was like pointing out like, hey, we need to change something here. She was like, if you keep eating like that, you're going to get as big as a barn. Okay. And boom, trigger moment. I was like, wow. wow, okay, this is why the kids are mean to me. Like this, I'm different. I am bigger than my brothers. Like I'm bigger than everyone else. You know, and you start- Maybe not taller? Not taller. <laughs> never, <laughs> that was never a, never a forte of mine, right? right? Um, and so you're like, oh shit, I'm different. Like right. it, not in a good way. At that point, you put right. a negative connotation on it. Um, so that's when, you know, you start equating, okay, all the popular kids at school- you know, are skinny. All the boys like the skinny girls. You know, my brothers are smaller than me. You know, kids are mean to me because I'm bigger because of the way that I look. Right. So then that just causes a waterfall of issues. Like, it wa- it waterfalls like oh, tears as well. Oh, oh, yeah. Man. I mean, I remember That's crying. Tough. I had tons of so, problems. So, in school. so that, and did that continue? Like, you didn't, like, when did you figure that out that you're like, hey, I really need to adjust that as opposed to, I'm aware of this and yet I'm going to continue in that? Like, did you so start like, changing at eight years old? Start so, adjusting your food? Um, probably a little bit. Looking back now, I can't really say that I had a, a disordered eating or eating disorder at eight, but I was cognizant that I needed to change the restrictive mentality of I need to eat less. Right. You know, just because of that, if you keep eating like that, you're going to get, you know, all the There's negative consequences. Yeah. The whole backyard's full of food, though. So, oh, I mean, that's part and of a barn. Dude, <laughs> so I, you even had right. a frame of reference. I was like, okay. <laughs> right. So, you know, that restriction mentality, it just follows you. It followed me all, all throughout school. I mean, high school, you know, as I got older, middle school was probably the heaviest. Uh, okay. Middle school into high school, I got up to 160 pounds. Okay. You know, which, you know, I'm only 5'1". So, well, I probably wasn't even 5'1 back then. That, right. That's fairly large on someone my size well, well to put it into perspective i was a skinny kid right in that mm-hmm. and when i was growing up i was a super skinny kid because i don't you had food in your backyard i, I didn't have anything <laughs> in my deep freeze we my, still do yeah, <laughs> all right. the beef which all is great now since all right? i eat is meat and eggs but just to yeah. put it into perspective i was six foot on the six foot three when mm-hmm. i came out of high school i was 135 pounds oh at my six gosh foot. so See? i mean i was perspective, super guys. i mean it's just yeah. so to put that in perspective, yep. that's a right. lot of difference. And it's it's really hard on your body, you know? And I mean, I remember not being able to move around like as easily. Right. You don't feel as good, you know, and you just... And I would get blown over in a, in a stiff right. wind 
Yeah. So we're I, opposite I mean, ends of the spectrum, but correct. yeah, but same, you know, cognitive yeah. like similarities Absolutely. and experiences. And I thought I couldn't get dates because I was skinny. Mm-hmm. And I was the opposite. <laughs> All right. It's yep. probably, uh, probably an insecurity problem because mm-hmm. I don't think, uh, I think people like confidence, but mm-hmm. uh, who knew, but yep. it really just wears on you. So I, I, coming from a completely different pr- perspective that I definitely understand mm-hmm. that for sure. So I'd say middle school was, was, um, really hard. I had a really hard time just right. m- mentally, emotionally, physically, like in middle school. Cause kids are so mean at that right. age sure. and you're old enough then like, you're like, Oh, I want a boyfriend. You know, you start liking boys and, right. and that kind of stuff. Um, accept yourself in the mirror. Right. The That's right. yeah. I don't know. I have never done. Well, I do that now. Right. Cause clearly we talked about the product in my hair. Do you have to, you've got to look know. at yourself and be like dude you look awesome today that's all right i do well, i do it, it. Every, i do it every do day you? yep i do nice. i look in the mirror every that's morning awesome. and i'm so, like you're looking great today nice that's good <laughs> well, yeah it's a good way to start yeah, the day right absolutely so did you did you feel like in that middle school time did you have like a did you consider yourself having an eating disorder i wouldn't you... say eating disorder okay. i had disordered eating habits like i would go through um times when i would restrict like all week okay. you know the binge and the purge so like um, there are so many different shades of like disordered okay. eating. So mine in particular, which I can, you know, only could speak of my experiences, sure. you know, I would restrict, restrict, restrict during the week. And then I would binge eat. And I noticed okay. I always had a really poor relationship with carbohydrates. Okay. I had gut issues basically my entire life. Like I was a high stress kid, yeah. you know, type A, like that doesn't, that doesn't help right. either. No. You know, cause that, you know, gut brain connection is so strong and emotions the whole bit um yeah that's like a that's a real thing oh yeah it I is had, i had i it's have huge. had in my adult life real uh, anxiety issues and discovered it had a lot to do with my it gut does. problems and my gut stress biome. and sleep have a lot to do with it and well, just stress eat, and sleep, eating the right food for and you and for me i also had a, a double dose of antibiotics i got real sick oh, in yeah. 2008 and it just absolutely w- it wiped does. out my biome and, and, and see and, as a child so. um I was young. I was not maybe only like six weeks old or something like that. Oh, really? I got RSV like before they knew what it was. What's RSV? So RSV is like a virus. It's um, like an upper. Yeah, okay. it's an upper respiratory <clears throat> virus okay. before they really knew what it was. So I was in Riley Hospital, like pumped full of all ant- okay. kinds of antibiotics. So I think that really did a number on, your butt, on my gut, your biome, gut biome. And that yeah. was yeah. just everything else, you know, caused all of my problems. So Wow gut issues you're to the point where you're like i don't even know what i can eat right that's <laughs> that but point. it's amazing how acutely aware you are of all of this right because mm-hmm. i mean i've had some issues uh back and forth with with some of that over the last uh, 10 12 years or mm-hmm. so and uh man it took forever for me to figure this stuff yeah. out and Tracking. i don't you know i don't know that i got it figured out either because you know then as soon as you figure it out and you're like oh this ain't no good yeah and sometimes our bodies are weird like you can have histamine reactions or, which is kind of like an allergic reaction okay to specific foods that maybe you didn't have problems with for a while. Right. Well, I noticed even when I went uh, carnivore based or meat right. based with my diet, I noticed throughout the tracking that I didn't digest pork or turkey very well. Really? So like even meats, like you can yeah. have differences in digestion. For sure. Even for with me, beef. Those. Beef slows me down. Yeah. See, like, I mean, really it's slows me down. That, I have a steak. It takes me two days. See, to, it's to get so it. unique. Our bodies are so unique. Yeah. And the types of food that you eat right. play a big role like on digestion, how well you digest it as well. And Most of is, us lack stomach acid too right. as a whole. So when and this is stuff you've kind of learned through oh, life, yes. right? I mean, not only are you in the medical field to a degree, yes. right? Yes, and but I'm you've also, also a nutritionist. You're a nutritionist mm-hmm. and you've done all this sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. you, that, you've, you've really developed that and become acute with that. Mm-hmm. And what you've done, I think, is different than, say, me, for example, who is battles through this and cries in the corner. Um, <laughs> I, I only do that when no one's looking. Um, but uh, no. I've only caught you a couple times. Just, just a couple times. Thanks. But I like your hugs. Thanks, Clark. Um, so, but you've done something different with that. What you've done is you've kind of opened yourself up to that. And you've journaled your experience Basically, on the interwebs. Yep. Online, right? man. Put it all out there. And do you find that that's therapeutic? Oh, totally. For you? Totally therapeutic okay. for me. Like, it's part of my success routine. You'll hear me preach about that. People right. follow me on social yeah because you have really really short posts every day all right i'm just kidding your posts are like like, yeah i'm like like, essays i'm like no i I write books yeah yeah i'm a little wordy but it's like like i have to get it all out there so writing is kind of my thing right um you know, I when lo- did you start that? Like from a high school, middle school, as the an adult? Actual jur- Honestly, I was an adult when I really started to post just my fitness journey. Okay. Because it just started, hey, I'm just showing my workouts. Like right. I'm just trying. And back then, like I totally had disordered eating habits. Right. 
like when I started. I look back at some of the memories and stuff that I posted, and I'm like, my gosh, but that's just part of the journey. Like, it's amazing to see how much you evolve as a human through the years, like when you go back and reflect on that stuff. Um, and you and, and you were willing to put started. it all out there, right? Yeah, I was just like, this is, you this know, is what you're doing. Slowly, you know, and you people started to follow a you. Community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, did you use that community for your own support, and then found out that you were gonna like you found that you were helpful to them? Yeah, it is was that how it worked. It was, or it was both. It went both, both ways. ways. Okay. Like I would have a lot of good friends that I would talk on there, and they would share their experiences. I would share my experiences, and you know, my body's been all shapes and sizes. I've done so many different things as far as health and fitness, right? You know, and just life business in general um you know and i just put it all out there like vulnerability is a it's a skill and a power that i think some people have a harder time expressing than others but it really is a superpower right like once you embrace that because really like we all have our own struggles right but yeah and there's a level of secure self-security that you have to have in order to be vulnerable particularly in public lots of yep uh, which, which keyboard warriors out there in this digital world you really do have to have thick skin because right. people will cut you down right but i mean you, but you were willing to do that i mean mm-hmm. even talking about how insecure you were and how difficult the journey was particularly with the bullying and that sort of stuff mm-hmm. you were still willing to go out there and take that chance absolutely and then put that out there i didn't want someone out. else so like especially our youth and like the young girls out there especially right? Cause I can relate to them. Like if I can help one of them to not have to go through the pain and the suffering that I went through and just beating yourself up, like right. physically, mentally, emotionally, if I can help one person, I don't care. It's worth it. Are you trying to get people to build self-confidence so Absolutely. that they can do that? Is that the key? Self-love is everything. And I know it's cliche. Everybody says it, but it really is like, you have to learn to love yourself. Right. And until you learn to love and accept yourself like as you are and not live for other people or think that you have to follow a certain path you know it's really hard for things to align like in your favor like you really have to learn that and it it is a skill you know um you know some people are fortunate enough to always be self-confident you know for the most part but there's i'd say probably the bigger majority of us really struggle with that sure well i think you get lost in information like you know, you think you have to live a certain timeline or by certain rules or do what everybody else is doing. And you really just have to get quiet with yourself. Man, like that, self-awareness is huge. That, you just yeah, hit on discovering something. Discovering who you are is important. Yeah. yeah. And you oh. hit on something too. Be quiet with yourself. Yeah. Like that, that, that calm. That, yeah. That's come up a lot yeah. in our conversations with people here, which yeah. I think is really interesting because it's something that I have trouble with is quieting my mind mm-hmm. and, and, and doing that. So, so I think that that's, that, I, that's I'll a tell theme people, that's come around. And your mouth. Well, that's, that, hey, that's why I make the big bucks, Clark. Yep. That's right. Right? I no, say, so. if in doubt, go walk. <laughs> the go answer walk. is oh, always walk. Go walk. Yeah, I mean, I've, the working out helps for me. That oh, forces my brain to so shut down therapy. because I'm just worried about not dying. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we do CrossFit. We, we so, do CrossFit which together. Is, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Some days you look at the workout and you're just like, why do I do this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but then you always feel like you can take over the world when you're done. Yeah. Yeah. You for about so half an hour right. that euphoria and then you're like, afterwards. You take your nap. Why? And then take nap. <laughs> you're it's like, crazy. I'm definitely not 20 anymore. Yeah. Uh, you're not? Not. Oh, all right. I'm not. I but you know what? I feel better at 40 than I ever did at 20. Yeah. Oh, well, you absolutely. look great, right? Thank I mean, you. you know, working out and, mm-hmm. and 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 you're willing to put the that journey to get to this and you've made mistakes throughout the oh, course of things and of you've mistakes. made adjustments and you've come to realizations and anyone who looks at your posts and your, your story now, you actually reflect on that a lot oh, about yeah. hey, the things that I've done. Mm-hmm. Cuz so, like what I look like now and what I do now doesn't mean half as much as the journey that got me to right. this point. So really, it's about reflecting on the past, like not dwelling on it, right? But say this is this is what helped make me, right? And we all have, you know, our own stories, right? So you gotta just reflect back and be like, yeah, every day take a step to like move the needle forward, like in a more positive direction. Yeah, that's really all you gotta do. That's cool. I mean, that's good, and that's so that's basically the message you're kind of yeah. giving out. Yeah, so love that's... yourself. Figure out how to create solutions to live your best life. Like, and, really, that's what it's all about. And so when you started this journey, did it immediately go, did it start with food and then go to working out? Or did it go to working out and then you needed the food to adjust the workout kind of thing? A little bit of both. And so, when you started working out, was it, was because you didn't jump right into CrossFit. No. So my, just some background okay. on my health and fitness. 
had the gut issues forever, overweight kid, you know, disordered eating basically my entire life. Right. Um, <clears throat> could never really figure out what to eat. So I just started out like simple walking. So okay. like the first few changes that I made, I would eat a salad, which I laugh now because that was the one thing that was tearing me up. Um, <laughs> I would eat a salad at dinner versus my normal, like, you know, two portions of whatever dinner right. we cooked, which okay. is always a meat, you know, potato and a vegetable because right. we live in the Midwest. That's what we eat. And, a, and you lived on a farm. And I lived on a farm. So, you know, all the good stuff. So I swapped that for a salad and I walked a mile on a treadmill. We had a treadmill. Okay. Home. Those were the only two changes I made. And I dropped probably 15 pounds really quick. Really? Yeah, really quick. But I was still overweight. This was, yeah, this is like freshman year of high school. Um, And slowly, like, I would lose weight. I would say the older that I got, you know, little bits here and there. I would go through, you know, the breakup where you don't eat for two and three weeks. And, you know, one. Now that's breakup with food. This, no, this is like breakup, with like boyfriend boys? breakup. Oh, okay. Oh my so God. So one we thing, haven't gotten into the boyfriend oh, stuff because boy. that's fun, right? So one, another right. so a really those. pivotal point though okay. with that I want to bring up because a lot of females struggle with this. Um, I dropped like, I went through a bad breakup. I dropped like, I don't know, it was like 15 pounds in like two or three weeks because right. I was so emotionally distraught. Like but That's like, so just to put it in perspective, not, that's 10% that's a plus lot. of your body So weight. I went back to school, and this happened over the summer. I went back to school, this was my senior year of high school, and I just got so much attention. Really? So much, oh my God, you've dropped so much weight. So you're like, okay, this is the secret to happiness right here. Right. This is this is how I gain my self-worth. I need to be as skinny as possible. Right. So then that just exacerbated like the, my disordered eating habits. Right. The binging and the purging and the whole bit. Because I think that's really important to mm-hmm. to, to communicate because yes. that may, may, may do that, but the underlying issue that got you there didn't get solved. Nope. And that's why you get those disorders. Nope. Right? You're not solving the inner issue because like I still didn't love myself. Right. I was still seeking validation through what I looked like. Right. You know, my body achievements, things like that. And you have to learn that, like, you are worthy just simply because you exist, not because of all of these X, Y, Z things. Um, So that was huge. That was a big problem for me. But I, you know, just slowly got into, like, pump classes, group classes, just trying different stuff, like, as far as fitness. I didn't discover CrossFit until I was in my early 30s. Okay. And then I had realized then, oh, my God, I can't, like, not eat and do this. Like, I feel like I'm going to die. Yeah. Like, something has to change. So then I was like, all right, started studying more into the nutrition stuff. I got to learn how to fuel my body. You know, typically, like, CrossFit and those, you know, high-intensity sports are highly glycolytic sports, which means they burn a shit ton of carbohydrates when you're doing them. Okay, so... Glycolytic. Look at that. Yeah, fancy word. Clark, write that one down. Shit ton. Shit ton. Oh, shit ton, ton. you understood. Okay. That is an official (laughs) term of measurement. It actually is. It is. is. It is. It is in my book. No, but I mean, literally, it comes from from, uh, 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 the size of a wine barrel on old ships. Look at all these fun facts you have. I just... Are you making that up? Maybe. Maybe. People are going to have help. You're going to have to look that up. It's T-O-N-N-E on shit ton. But anyway. Oh, my goodness. So uh, now I see squirrel brain. I already forget what I was talking about. We were talking about shit tons. Shit (laughs) tons. I was like, I remember shit tons. No, we were talking about uh, glycogenetic. Oh, yeah, yeah. So whatever the cool word you said was. a ton of carbohydrates. Correct. So you're like, all right, so I got to eat all these carbs. Right. Okay, well, those were making my gut issues worse. Was it? I felt worse. I'm like, well, I'm torn. Like, I don't know what to do. This is what all these people are telling me to do. And I'm doing it and it's not working. Like I'm feeling worse. Right. Um, So finally, when to get to like the carnivore thing, uh, COVID hit, you know, back in what, March, April, 2020. And I was like, all right, they took the gym away. This is the perfect time to experiment. Right. I notice I always feel better on a lower carb approach. I digest meat, you know, for the most part. Right. Fine. Went carnivore. Um, knew I needed to kind of heal things and probably needed to eat more calories for okay. a while. And I did. I gained 15 pounds when I started. So okay. the mistake people make is they go into it from a fat loss perspective, thinking right. they're going to drop weight and it's going to be a magic pill and everything's going to be fine. Well, whatever, that, just whatever diet they're on, right? Yeah, yeah. whatever diet, especially like a keto, low-carb, right. okay. carnivore approach. Um, and your story matters leading up to that point. So people forget that. So the efficacy. What, what matters? The, your story. Okay. So like. You know, what were you you eating? Yeah, prior. What was your health prior? You know, what's your emotional state, your mental state prior to that? Like, it all plays a part in, 
you know, how efficient, you know, and effective that diet is right. and how you're doing it. Well, I didn't track my food. I know I was, I was smashing tons of food. I mean, like whole racks of ribs. I mean, it was delicious. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Two, two packs of bacon one day. Oh, Boy, I'm telling you, there's going to no, no. be, be guys out there that'll be like, oh, she'll smash a whole rack oh, of dude. ribs. Oh, I did. Nice. I would eat a whole rack of whole chuck roast. Like, that's what I was eating. And then you got the ladies out there like, really? They were like... And at the time, they were like, you know, I know, I knew I'd put on weight. I'd right. put on about 15 pounds. Right. And, you know, I was reverse dieting kind of at the time, just letting my body do its thing. Um, started tracking my food, figured out that I digested ground meat the best. Okay. I got an air fryer. I am the air fryer queen. Nice. And I cook like basically everything in it because I eat for function and right. simplicity and convenience. That's All a, the things. Yeah, that's an interesting point because there's definitely people who – eat to live mm-hmm. and then there's people who live to eat absolutely and, and you it's, can't do that and it sounds like you've done both mm-hmm. right oh, you started yeah. out as two you ends were... of the spectrum <laughs> yeah but i mean you started out woman you know... of extremes <laughs> yeah but that's all right i mean that's the uh, type a personality thing absolutely. right you're just gonna Still do it, it. <laughs> just go full force yep but i think that that's an interesting transition that you made that all of a sudden you realize oh um, i need to eat food to power my body yes. and to get to a particular way as opposed to uh, this is the thing that I enjoy, or this is the thing that mm-hmm. uh, sates me when I'm sad, or or mm-hmm. celebrate when I'm happy, and that sort of stuff. So the relationship to food, I think, is really important. Oh, in it's that case. huge! Like, and then there are you... things you need to figure out along the way, and that's why, like tracking, right? Like noting how you feel, like your energy level, your but digestion, that, how's your sleep. But all that's of my that point is, is you you've also addressed there's a mental component to it that absolutely is mm-hmm. critical to making sure that that all mm-hmm. works. And I think that that's really important to to link mm-hmm. up with everybody because if you don't deal with the underlying relationship and the mental um, uh, the mental connection that you have to, to food or or in your own body image or self-worth and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. If you don't start to heal that, the rest of it is just mm-hmm. on the surface isn't going to make that much nope. of a difference. So I always like to say you have to diet from the inside out. Okay. Like you have to start from the inside out. Like you have to figure out what works best for you, like what style of diet works best. Right. What food do you digest best? Right. Like they're, they're all self-awareness pieces. And do you... From a medical standpoint, mm-hmm. do you do you take any blood tests or mm-hmm. or or Absolutely. gut tests or anything like so that? So I had so updated labs done. Okay. Um, once I had done carnivore, I think I was about a year in. Um, and prior to that, I mean, my labs were always pretty decent, and I had never really had any issues, right. except for my inflammatory markers were really high. Okay, so what do you mean by like your labs? Like with Crohn's disease, so so blood work. Okay, so I had blood, blood work. work done. So you got like uh, like um, Basic antibody panels, tests, and antibodies, antibodies okay. you know, inflammatory Cholesterol. markers. Okay. Yes, the whole bit. Okay. Um, so when I had it checked about a year after carnivore, everything was perfect. My inflammatory markers were lower than they had ever been. Wow. Okay. I did. I haven't had like a, a gut flare really, like okay. a Crohn's flare, like a bad one since I went meat based. And you about said three you, years ago. You said you were diagnosed with Crohn's. Two, 2018. So yeah, okay. I lived a long time without an official diagnosis. I okay. knew there was something more. So what than is IBS. Crohn's disease for those who don't so exactly Crohn's know? So Crohn's disease is an inflammatory bowel disease. It can affect any part like of your colon. Mine's affected like kind of where your appendix is. Okay. We call that like the right lower quadrant, like okay. for all of us medical people out there. But it's like where your appendix is. That's where mine's affected. So that's okay. where I would have the most pain. You know, I would have GI bleeding. I was chronically constipated. So, you know, I didn't have the diarrhea problem. I was the opposite. Right. Um, you know, slow digestion. So I have right. slow motility, like when it comes to food. Um, so, I mean, the whole bit. Right. Right. And, and you feel miserable. And right. And so you got diagnosed with that. Did that diagnosis help with no. deciding to go? Or, or no. was it really just the blood work to no, find out where like you were? I already it was knew, trial and error? I already knew I had a problem. Okay. I kind of already knew it was more than IBS because that's what a lot of people are misdiagnosed just with IBS right. early. Um, mine was more through personal experience. Okay. I knew that I felt better when I ate meat okay. and eggs. And I was like, okay. So I, you know, you start researching like the veterans, like the people who've been doing it for a long time. There's right. tons. There's a wonderful carnivore community mm-hmm. online. They're all so helpful. They share their story. I mean, tons of YouTube. I mean, you name right. it. I did it all. And I was like, okay. Well, Kelly Hogan was one of the first ones that I discovered, okay. and she's been carnivore for a long time, ten plus years. Right. And I was like, all right, she looks awesome. Great personality. She was just like down to earth. And I was like, I love this lady. Right. I'm going to listen to everything that she says. Okay. So basically, I mean, and that's just how I dug in. Like I 
would learn from them and what they did. Um, and then also taking my own personal experience and kind of tweak things. Like I had enough confidence to do that on my own, you know, with my medical nutrition background and just personal experience. And so like once I started tracking, I figured out my macros. So macros are macronutrients, which means your carbs, your proteins, and your fats for people that don't know, um, played around with those, um, started air frying most of my food because it was easy and convenient for me. And I dropped 20 pounds in like two months. Oh, right. And now yeah. that came off of the 15 Just pounds that you gained? Just figuring out, okay. yes. So people were like, what did you do? And I was like, well, I didn't change like my diet style. I just changed the way I cooked it, my kind of my my macros, like my portions right. and the types of meat I was eating. Okay. Um, didn't really change my workouts too much. Right. I mean, really, I'm, I'm a creature of habit when it comes to routine and workouts. Um, and I had already built, you know, like a lean physique underneath, you know, right. because I had that CrossFit background. Right. So people are like, I want to look like you. And I was like, listen, I, I look this way because of my background, which is different than your background. Right. I built it doing CrossFit. Like you're, everyone's going to look different. So right. you need to figure out what you like. And that gets you in the gym, figure out what kind of a physique you want to look like. Right. And if you don't like working out or eating like that person does, guess what? It's probably not going to work right. for you. You, it all goes back to, you have to do what works for you. Right. No and one so, fits so all. when you, I mean, obviously the, the carnivore thing for you has, mm-hmm. has what's worked, but oh, when yeah. you, when you life coach people or you talk nutrition with mm-hmm. them, that's not necessarily what no. you're pushing, no. What you're trying to cover, come up with is exactly what works A for them. A solution that works for them. Yeah. So like some of my people, I would say the majority of my clients now are more meat based, lower carb with their okay. diet. I do have some athletes that I coach that they have great digestion. They don't have problems, right. you know, emotional problems with carbohydrates and by all means, carbs are not bad. They're not at all. Right. Um, and I can eat some, maybe like some white rice every once in a while. I yeah. really don't and, crave and it or need it. Oh yeah. Social alcohol. Thank <laughs> God. Thank you. <laughs> and in moderation. Yes, yes. I love my bourbon, my old fashions are my favorite. All right. There you go. Yeah. So, and all of us are different. Some right. can't tolerate it at all. Right. I'm okay with, you know, in moderation, two to three drinks, I'm fine. Right. I know that I can't go over that or I feel right. terrible the next day. Um, Hydration is a lot of it. Make sure you're hydrated. Right. But really, like, everybody can find their own solution. I say there's 50 shades of the carnivore diet. 50 shades of the carnivore 50 diet. 50 shades of the carnivore diet, and you just got to pick which one works for you. And and that, and that you don't just pick. I mean, you have to trial and error. Yeah, it's, trial and it takes and a while and everything. And everyone has to be patient when they go on that journey. Very because patient. it's going to be... Took me a whole year. Going to make mistakes, right? So that's why, I mean, I had an interview a while back. Like, I wrote a blog about basically my whole journey, just so people could understand, you know, the why and the how and right. the transitions. But it takes time. It, I gained 15 pounds, which is super uncomfortable, especially right. for someone that grew up with a disordered eating past right. and bad body image. It's hard, but you have to go through those periods right. if you want body change and right. like to heal. Like you have to. Right. All goes back to self love. So yeah, went through that. And so do you find do you find in the workouts that uh, that lowering how do you how do you deal with the performance level of the workouts without the carbohydrates because we know the carbohydrates and the your body glycogen adapts to it your body adapts like to I it. can do a fasted workout like for example we did Murph okay okay so Memorial Day Murph it's a mile run a um, hundred pull ups two hundred push ups three hundred squats and another mile run right. I did that like twenty hours fasted like two years ago what best time of my life wait you fasted for i'm not 20 saying hours before you did yeah that? i'm not saying that my my blood sugar was fantastic i mean it was through the roof just cortisol you know right. stress but man i felt great did you i felt great i had the best time i'd ever had man yep. I've, i do that and years I ago. die damn near every time no just, i get to that last mile run and i'm like i'm gonna walk no it just it's i tough. it's knowing yourself but right man i smashed some food when i was done yeah oh yeah like you just figure out a meal of, timings a lot right Especially when it, when you're doing um, more, maybe more higher intensity workouts, right. you know, like CrossFit or Orange Theory or like, you know, spin or things like that. Right. Meal timing on a meat heavy diet is really important to figure out how it affects your energy levels. Now, and what, how is, you need what to do you do with that. fat in there? Are, are you, mm-hmm. are you uh, averse to fat or oh, do you no. find that you have to have a higher fat content in order to perform so that energy? So where get we energy? get our energy, it's not from protein. Right. It, protein is not an optimal energy source. So our energy sources come from carbs right. and they come from fat. So right. if you pull your carbs away, what do you have left? Fat. Yeah, I got fat. Right. So you got to raise your fats. Right. Okay. And they need to be uh, good fats, right? Yeah. So if you're eating animal-based products, like that is the most bioavailable nutrient-dense foods you can have. Right. 
you know, really, okay. you really don't have to worry about it. So it's like the low quality veggie oils. Like I noticed even, and I don't eat out a lot, but I will always ask them what they cook their food in. Okay. Cause I just can't stomach it. Like canola oil and things like that. Huge. And that's, inflammatory. and that's a you thing. That's a me thing. Right. I'd say in general for most okay. people need to be cognizant of that. Okay. So you recommend just, you know, pork fat and yeah, fry everything in pork normal. fat? Yeah, normal. I don't fry everything in pork <laughs> I'm fat. I'm just kidding. I but just... like beef tallow, um, butter, and like oh, bacon fat are mainly like what more meat-based carnivore people use. Okay. Like and and you fats. find that that's what, you, that's what you're getting high your energy fat from? High yes. fat meats? Okay. Yeah. And you know, and I don't have a gallbladder either. So my threshold as far as fat wait, wait, is a little what? bit later. So was that a... little lighter than most people. No, no, no. The gallbladder. I thing. don't have a gallbladder. So, so I had that you... removed back oh, okay. in 2013. Yeah, okay. so it definitely was a huge transition and is that, period. For was that me. a function of having uh, Dis- gut issues? I and- say that it was because of my disordered eating. Okay, because you go through so many periods of restriction and then you you binge. Right. Uh, my body did not know what to do with food. Sure. Like, I know that was probably my fault. Okay. So um, I didn't have gallstones or anything like that, but it would it wasn't functioning. So it would feel like if I would eat like a fatty meal, right. it wouldn't contract like to get right. rid of the bile, so that I had the pain and. The gallbladder. Man, attacks. you've been through a lot of stuff with this. Uh, yeah, huh? cervical cancer, gallstone. Oh, wait, not gallstones, what? but kidney stones. Had my gallbladder out. Oh yeah, the whole bit. So you're just gonna blow by the cervical cancer like it was nothing? <laughs> yeah. So it's like okay. Yeah, so I that was just I a was thing, right? Just a time. Twenty six. Wow. When I got cervical cancer. Man. Mm-hmm. And you just wear all of this like armor. Yeah, it just it right? is what it is. You deal with it and move on. Look at you, man. Yeah. So when you coach people through this stuff, are, are most of the people that you coach to through an, like an online deal and it's just part of that community? Or is that, do you do like one-on-one coaching? And then the other question that I have with that is how much of that is women and how much of it is men? You know, here lately I've been getting more men. Okay. Um, I yeah, but I meant for ma- the coaching. Oh, ah, just kidding. Majority of my clients, yeah. Majority of my clients are women. Okay. Um, and I would say most of my clients have struggled with disordered eating or gut issues. Okay. Or two biggies. A lot of them are meat-based or they would like to do a more low-carb approach because sure. they just don't have a good relationship with carbohydrates. But um, I find most of them on Instagram, right. you know, locals, word of mouth, you know, right. I go speak at different gyms. Like if anybody has any gyms that, or wherever, businesses that right. they want me to go speak at, like I'm more than happy to do Q&A sessions. And right. Because you're you obviously need. shy and you stay in your oh, shell. super shy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I am it. an introvert by nature, but... Um, you just, you have to know when to pause and take time for yourself. And right. then, yeah, sure. I love, I mean, I love people. I'm, I'm in a service based industry, like right. everything that I do. So, you know, you have to put yourself out there. Yeah. You got to be comfortable with yourself. That's, I mean that, of yeah, of course. And you've done a great job of that too. Thank right. You. And, and, and doing through doing all of this sort of stuff, when you have those conversations with those people, mm-hmm. is it the history that, uh, that you went through that you're sharing with them to help them get through that? Or do you really just kind of, that's out there, they can figure that one out and you try mm-hmm. to get in on their stuff? Mm-hmm. So my information's all out there. Right. You know, I'm more than happy to speak about it if they want to. But really, like, you just need to sit and listen to somebody. I have no idea what that's like. You have to sit and listen, <laughs> listen to their story. I mean, you can, yeah, I'm an empath by nature. So like, you know, you can feel emotions. Right. Like I know what that feels like because I lived it too. Right. So just listen to their needs. And right. really it's just figuring out like what is going to help you lead the most peaceful life possible? Like okay. what is going to be the easiest thing to implement into your life? And a lot of it's success habits. It's routine. Okay. It's like how do we optimize our day? You know, like right. how is our mindset? Right. How do we deal with that? You know, um, how do you change your environment so that you're creating more of a successful environment for yourself to, to, you know, set yourself up for success? Your environment is everything. Right. Are there people you need to remove from your life? Now, like you, it's not just food and exercise. Right. It's are everything. people in? Are, is this a difficult thing for people who are in relationships where one of the people in the relationship wants to go on this journey and the other person with their habits and their baggage that goes along with that? Um, becomes part of the conflict that, that um, arises oftentimes, there? Oftentimes, yes, that is an issue that does come up. Okay. And communication is everything. I mean, really, everything goes back to communication. Sure. Just explaining, hey, this is how I feel. These are the things that I need to do to help myself feel better so that I can serve you better. Right. You know, this is me trying to create a solution. So if people usually are lashing out or like a spouse or someone else has a problem, it has everything to do with them. Right. It has everything to do with them and nothing to do with the person. So just being like, Hey, you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing what you need to do. And this makes them uncomfortable. Right. You know, so try to put yourself in their shoes. Like this is how they're feeling. So how do you need to communicate in a way that makes them feel 
safe and heard and seen and i'm doing this for you as well as for themselves yeah right yeah let's see i i I, i'm doing this for you by me being a better me yeah and this is how i need you to support me like it's communicate because if you don't tell them like people can't read your mind they don't know so if you don't tell them like how are they supposed to know so has that so so knowing all of that how Mm -hmm. does that affect your personal relationships i mean how does i mean you've been on this uh extensive journey (laughs) right? With a lot of things yes. going on. And you have come to terms with a lot of them and you battle every day with oh, this stuff, every right? Day. Right? Because that's being human, right? Mm-hmm. How does, is that, is that work? How does that work with your relationships when, when you get involved that way? Is it a difficult thing because you're always in motion and always active and always aware of that? Or is it actually a good thing because you're actually cognizant of this and can mm-hmm. bring it to the I table? think it's a good thing. Like, I know to surround myself with, you know, an encouraging community, people who are like-minded. Right. Um, people that accept you. Really, right. it's about picking people who make you want to be a better person. Okay. And if there are people that are bringing you down, maybe, maybe you need to look at removing specific people. Okay. You know, or habits or environments from your life. So I, I mean, you can say I'm savage when it comes to cutting people from my life. If right. I don't feel like they're serving me in a positive way. Okay. That doesn't mean that I mean, it just is, hey, you know, appreciate whatever relationship we had during this time, but you know, Right. This isn't the direction that I'm going and I don't think we align anymore. Right. And just letting it go. So I'm very picky about who who my friend circle is, who okay. I surround myself. Right. Like if I'm the smartest person in the room, like there's a problem. Oh. <laughs> you know, when, when when I go, you know, if I can't learn something different right. from someone else, you know, or put myself in whatever situation, whether it's business related, friends, going right. out, whatever. If that environment is not going to serve me in a positive way in some way, shape or form, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And I think that's an I inter- base my decisions yeah. off of that. I think that's an interesting point. You said being the sm- not being the smartest person in the room. But I think it's really interesting about that is um, we can define that in a lot of different ways because oh, yeah. you might be smart about one thing and not about another. But well, same I, thing with success. Success but, means something different to correct. everyone. Correct. And I, that's, that's excellent. And I think putting yourself around people and being aware that everybody else brings something that you don't have Absolutely. or that you can learn mm-hmm. to that situation and um, enriches your own life. Yes. So that's a, I think that's a real healthy I love attitude. talented people that are just people that are different. I love people that are authentic to themselves. See, Clark, back that, you said that earlier, right? You're I authentic. just love people who are just like, hey, I'm a weirdo. I say, hey, I'm a weirdo over here right? too. Cool. But can, different kind of can, weirdo. We can totally be friends. Sure. Yeah. I just love people who own their shit and are just right. like, this is the way that I live and yeah. You can either like me or not. I don't really care. Like those are the people but, I want to hang yeah, out but with. Yeah, but I mean, but that when I mean, you hit on that, like you're there's a level of self confidence, right? That clearly from your story you didn't have early on. Oh no. And going through this journey to have that, right? To have that self confidence that I don't care if you like me or not, I'm going to be who I am going to be, mm-hmm. right? Of course, we all want people to like us, right? Yeah. But the reality is, you've you've gotten to that level, and I think that that's such a healthy place that that in and of itself is part of the attraction for people, mm-hmm. right? To be, it's I found so that much peace and freedom. Yeah, I mean, I found so I was I was such an insecure kid, right? Growing yes. up with whatever issues that I had, I was such an insecure kid. And I attached the same way you did. I attached how other people saw me based on physical things Mm -hmm. and didn't address the insecurity issues. And then when my life changed and things were different and I made different decisions and nobody cares about my story, we're talking about yours, but ultimately (laughs) I'm just trying to be empathetic here in that, you know, the underlying confidence thing shifts. All of a sudden your relationship with other people Mm -hmm. changes for the better. For Mm -hmm. them and for you. And I think that that's kind of a cool thing. And let me, like, life starts treating you very well when you start doing your own thing. Right. You move forward with a positive, like, loving mindset. Right. And just a service attitude. And you're like, hey, I own my shit. Like, this is who I am. Right. Love me, hate me. Like, it's okay. Love everybody. Just, I say, bless and block. Bless and block. Bless and block. Oh, man. Oh, you mean like blocking on the, on the, on the interwebs? Literally, figure it, whatever, however you want to say it. All right. Yeah, you just say that's hey, cool. I wish you healing, my friend. Yeah, it's let them go. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. And what moving forward is there anything that you're doing differently or that you're shifting to that's changing moving forward? Um, so I'm always doing different okay. stuff. Like I said, multifaceted human here. I'm still doing the X-ray stuff. I'd say like throughout my coaching, my coaching has kind of evolved. 
I mean, health, fitness, food, exercise, it's it's a big portion of it. But the mindset piece and kind of like the personal coaching, right. it's kind of shifted more towards that. Like, where do we need to change things in your routine during right. the day? Let's discover what kind of a person you are, like what works for you as far as organization. Um, you know, what kinds of people do you need to be around that makes you feel good? Like, where's your energy right now? Like, what right. gives you energy? What takes away energy? What are you good at? Like, what are your strengths and weaknesses? What right. do we need to work on? And this is this is something that you like intuit a lot of mm -hmm. when you interact with people too, yes. right? I mean, you kind of kind of have developed that that instinct that way. And mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. So you think that that is shifted more towards the yes. life coach version of it, mm -hmm. which then obviously plays back to the health and fitness. Yes, is that it? it's all hand, it all plays hand in hand. Like I'm a very intuitively led person. I right. say. I live vibrationally, okay. <laughs> vibrational living. If I feel like doing it and something lights me up and I'm excited about it, then I do it. Like I quit trying to make sense of things because right. too many people try to put themselves in a box and they're like, I have to be this way. Right. No, you don't really have to do that. Like if you feel pulled to go somewhere or travel or do something different or, you know, change, you know, if you're in a business or service or whatever you're doing, like try it out. Right. You so know, you, if it doesn't work, you learned a lesson. Um, but do you find people that there are people that seem to be not type A, but they're all over the place just because that's the way life is and they have to feel yes. more centered and kind of so, create that structure and routine, <laughs> yes, which is I, different than your personality? Yes, I have some friends that, yes, they okay. are uber talented, but they lack structure, just right. basic structure, even if it comes to, like, let's just say taking care of a household, like right. household chores or just creating some kind of a success routine. It all comes back to that. Uh, really just sitting them down and being like, okay, so structure doesn't mean that you're like chained to a desk. Right. Structure actually gives you more freedom because it gives you more freedom because you get done what you need to do. Okay. And what you have to get done during the day. And then it leaves like so much space just for like energetic, like and creation. It, it, it leaves that room. Yeah. Flexibility in your day. Like, you know exactly what's going to happen. You know, you could leave room for flexibility, but you need to have like your basic success routine nailed down. Okay. You know. So I, I've, I okay. So analogy that I, I've done with, with um, filmmaking and uh, short films and things is if you sort of like if you put a shot list together. And you get all of those shots together, and you know exactly which ones you're going to be doing that mm -hmm. particular day. Um, things aren't going to go perfectly, but it allow what, once you know that those things, when things go off the rails, you can kind of a, make adjustments for that mm -hmm. and and get that. And sometimes the best work comes out of those accidents, mm -hmm. right? But then when everything goes off the rails and there's a little bit of chaos, you can always then fall back on to that. Mm -hmm. that shot list, right? And I think that's the same way in yeah, life. Like There's a outline. level of routine. You've got this outline that you got can go outline. with. So if if you don't know what you're doing, you just follow that routine and everything goes fine. Or you follow mm -hmm. that structure in your daily because life. Because with overwhelm, it breeds inaction. Inaction yes. is still inaction, but it breeds inaction because you get so overwhelmed. People are just like, ah, like they freak I out do and they don't Clark, get anything done. Inaction breeds that overwhelm. When you feel overwhelmed, you get like, feel like you get, yeah. don't do anything. Yeah, it's like a huge right? weight on your shoulders. Well, I mean, there's... There's times that you need to pause. Correct. No, absolutely. And, and finding mm -hmm. that sweet spot, but but I think there's a level of that. I mean, I think, oh, wow, that's oh, yeah. you hit that because I feel that a lot. I feel overwhelmed. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, what are you doing today? And it's like I look at the list. I'm like, God, there's I, there's so many things I can or should or would do, and then I end up halfway through the day and went, man, I did none of it. So what the I heck? always look at those. And I'm like, what are the most important things that right. I have to get done? I'm only going to focus on those. I'm going to do that and I'm going to do them well. And then eh, if I have time to do the rest of them, then right. I'll do it. If I don't, at least I got my like main things done today that I had to get right. done. And I, I get up early, crush my day early. I get most of my stuff done in the early hours. Right. That's so good. then the rest of the day I can chill and do whatever I want to do. Because for me, I found that, uh, especially when we, you were talking about COVID and going through those the, that period of time, for me, I had, there was, I was at sea a bit there, mm -hmm. right? And I found that, I didn't know what I was going to go do, and I didn't know what was going to happen coming out of that. And for me, I got back to working out, and mm -hmm. I got back to working out on a regular schedule. And it got to a point where that was the only thing I knew I was going to do all mm -hmm. day, except sleep and eat. But you know, it was still But it was something that created a, a structure. Right. It started right. that process for me. And then I actually moved my workouts into the mornings mm -hmm. because I found like, oh, if I got that structured thing done at the beginning of the day, mm -hmm. right, 
I had more room to get other things done, and I was Absolutely. I was stimulated, and I was motivated, and I was doing that sort of stuff. I'm the same so way. So just so you know, I have skipped my workout this morning to be here. Just with you. for me. Just for he you. did this just for me. Yeah. How about that? Usually on our days off, we'll be in the gym at the same time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I've, I've seen you I at went, the gym a I time went or early. two. I went early this yeah, morning. Yeah. You also don't do the class. You do your own thing. You know, I'm on Katie time. Yeah. Katie does what she wants <laughs> to do. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Katie, are you doing it? No, no you never do never what you're do. supposed to be doing. <laughs> no, you, you get the iPod. Vibrational yeah. living. Yeah. You just, yeah, you just in there uh, oh, doing your thing. Oh yes. And then, uh, and then if anyone really wants to know, they just get on the Instagram. They find yeah, out. Yeah, I'm did. like, if you want to know what I'm doing, just, I mean, just get on the gram. Right, exactly. So, the other thing that you do, and because of your security and self uh, love, mm-hmm. you actually do a lot of photo shoots. Yeah, I actually have one Thursday. Look at that. Yeah, can't Which will wait. have been last Thursday, I think, when this, this drops. It's the, oh. See, I think it's a yeah. time thing. So my, yeah, my photo shoot is this Thursday. That's cool. With David then, McKenna. He's okay. a photographer here in Indy. Okay. Can't wait. And it's you've gonna, actually also awesome. done stuff with Tori Hudson. Yes. Oh right. my God, he's so talented. Isn't, isn't Tori great? Tori? Yeah, I think we're going to have, was, we're trying to get him back in. First, he was one of my first photo shoots that I was did. He? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was back when I worked. I worked for a company called Kettlebell Kitchen. Right. And um, we kind of paired up. Oh my gosh, he's so talented. He's great. We had him he's in and he fabulous. showed us some of his photos and he's got a, he's got a new thing coming on and we're hoping to have I'm him so back on. So Tori's him. pretty cool. And He's and, amazing. Yeah. So you do these photo shoots. Yes. I love that. And what's the value of the photo shoots for you? Because you, you're not, I, I don't like know. to call them legacy shoots. Legacy shoots. Okay. You know, legacy shoots. A lot of the photographers, Hey, you know, I'm kind of looking for this kind of a style of a photo. Right. A lot of them will follow you, you know, like on social media, because not only are they representing you as right. a person, they're taking photos of you. So if you have a business or a service, you want to make sure that you're represented in a professional, you know, manner, right. but you are also, um, representing their business. Right. You know, so I always tell photographers, like, don't just reach out to, like, any old person. Like, make sure that... Um, oh, do they reach out to you? Mm-hmm. A lot of them okay. reach out to me. They want to take yep. pictures of you? Yep, and I'll yeah, just... Yeah, no. Hey, you can look, uh, take pictures of... No, yeah. nobody wants to take pictures yeah. of me. Yeah, so just make sure that, that <laughs> you uh, align. So I really... Um, so the photos that I'm having done, you know, with Dave, like, right. he was like, hey, I would like to meet with you. And I was like, right. totally respect people who do that because right. like nobody wants to meet face to face anymore and it's like oh, if you're doing a photo don't. shoot like photo shoots are like fairly intimate you they know a lot be, of yeah. them like you really because the energy shows like if you don't work well with a photographer and you know vice versa right it comes out in the photos and so what's the value of the photo shoot for you i mean oh, just you, you have stuff content, to put it on it's just stories, content stories like okay. Man, you can use them for so many different things. Right. Like I'm a storyteller. Like I like, you know, like to write stories. Sure. And yeah, I want to have great photos. And, you know, I'm proud of those. You know, I call them legacy shoots. Right. So we'll be doing a whole different stuff. You know, business stuff, boudoir. Boudoir is my favorite. I was trying to get um, to that. It's so empowering. <laughs> I tell women, I was like, go do a boudoir shoot. Like, you know. Right. It's so empowering to do that. Yep. And now, so look for those coming out. Those are going to look good. So <laughs> I can't so, wait. So, but think about that for a second, yeah. which I think is pretty impressive. Think of where you were in middle school and early oh, in high school. With I was that the girl journey. that wore a t-shirt over their bathing suit. Right. Exactly. Yep. And, and then you've gotten to this point where it. now you want to now get I'm in like, lingerie and lay well, around and photos. Well, it was funny. Dave, when Dave and I met for coffee, he was like, you know, I think I've seen you in your bra and underwear more than most of my clients. <laughs> and I started laughing. I was like, Dave, I'm going to take that as a compliment. He's like, no. He was like, it's totally a compliment. That's funny. Yeah. So I'm just like, mom and dad, don't look. If it, if it bothers you, well, do, do, they how, don't care how do anymore. You, they don't care anymore? Now, at first, I, you know, it's, you know, different. But now. How about brothers? Yeah. They don't really say much. Really? They keep their mouth shut. Do I'm, they? I'm, 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 I'm a little savage. Like, they know better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, I have the best family ever. Yeah. Yeah, they're all very supportive. That's, yeah, no, that's awesome. And, and you've, and you've done that. And now you're going to do this photo shoot. Mm-hmm. You're going to obviously throw those. Now, do you, do you drop a whole bunch of these or you kind of trickle them out know. as you go? I'll probably trickle them out. Um, yeah. Of course, I want to support Dave as much as possible. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try to get a whole bunch of, you know, different photos. Um, but yeah, just attach story, stories to them. Like, so I for, always try to make something it's just educational. just added content, right? Yeah, added because, content. Because your posts, Website uh, updates, things like that. So you have a website? Yes, okay. I do have a website. Which is? It's not super fancy, but hey, it works for me. No, it's all the way. It's just littlebitoffit.com. Little bit of fit. Yep. Any of the underscores all, on there? No underscores. All together? Yep. Lil, Lil, Lil L-I-L. L-I-L, L-I-L B-I-T-O-F. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you got that. So when you do your Those posts, are my longer blogs are on there. 
Oh, they're longer than the stuff that you put on Facebook and Instagram? Tons of educational content. Yeah, because everything that you post has the click more button Mm -hmm. and then it scrolls down and never fits on my phone. And Mm -hmm. I got to scroll through that whole thing. I make you you work for it. Yeah, you. (laughs) I bet you do. (laughs) I bet that's your thing. Oh, I do. (laughs) I mean, and you, and this is almost every day that these posts are out there. I write every morning. Do you? Is that mm-hmm. part of your routine? Yep. It's part of my success routine. It's part of your it success routine. It makes me feel lighter and I know that I'm helping somebody else out there. Yeah, it's part of my and success And do you have routine. a plan about what you're going to talk nope. about or do you just sit down and I'm a very go, intuitively is... led person. Okay. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, whatever message I feel like sharing, that's what I share. Okay. And you yep. do actually answer some of the questions mm-hmm. that are fairly consistent so as well. So a lot of the topics I talk about are questions that people have posed via social media. Okay. You know, slid into those DMs, you know. <laughs> I get a wide variety of things there. I bet you do. Yeah, I do. And I just post about whatever because, you know, it's life and we're all just trying to learn from one another. Right. Mm-hmm. And you find the most interaction that you have is from the Instagram? Probably, yes. Instagram right. and a little bit on, on Facebook. Um, I find, like, the older generation is more on Facebook, but I would say I'm most active on Instagram. Right. And do you, okay. So do you find that, um, do you find that if there's an age range of people that really, uh, have taken to you or is it literally, like you said, across the map? It's a wide variety. Yeah. I mean, I have everyone from like people in their, you know, younger twenties all the way to like 60 plus. I mean, really? really. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's I would awesome. say my most popular age range is probably that like 25 to probably 45 okay. is probably that's my, a pretty big range yeah it's a pretty big age range is but... that your range clark <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult thing out here <laughs> oh yeah I we're talking think, about different I don't think... things <laughs> when you do these big posts mm-hmm. and you just kind of do that is there a particular um angle that you want to go at are you going a particular direction like do you build one off the other and so I, I mean, I kind of have a strategy, like I'll try to post, like maybe somebody posed a question via DM, whether it's an right. emotional subject or whatever. And I'll just, you know, I try to like write a story about it. Um, and so, most of your stories are, are related to you. So in some way, shape or right. form or a question that someone has. Right. Okay. Yep. Have asked me. Um, I'll try to do a more like educational post. So I at least have two posts a day. I try to do oh, really? like. really? That yep, much? Okay. Yep. At least two a day. So I'll write one. Um, just kind of like a more, you know, maybe personal post and then an educational post or like a recipe because okay. people always want recipes. And I enjoy putting those out there too. And, um, and those are recipes that you fit. find or both a little bit of both. Okay. Yep. Ones that I've, I've made created on my own ones that I found, you know, on, on Insta, you know, okay. wherever on the interwebs, right. um, that I feel like people will like, and I just create, I'll create graphics. I use Canva for most of my graphics. Okay. I'm a creative type. Like I right. love to color and do all right. that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's how I really, that's how I and, spend and, my spare time. Okay. I'm either working out, traveling, or I'm creating things. Okay. Well, that, talking to people that and networking. Suck. No, that not I have suck. the most blessed life. Really. Yeah, that's so cool. And you find, you find this whole process is therapeutic for you as Very. well. Right. I mean, this is, this is your own brand of therapy mm-hmm. and you get the added bonus of helping other people, which also in turn makes you feel good too yep. right oh, that's that's phenomenal. cool right mm-hmm. that's awesome and you're just keeping on keep keep doing consistency that, right? man consistency so when it comes I, to building community right? like especially online it's just consistency just keep, people know i post usually twice a day every right? morning it's like getting the paper and you go and, and you you go live Consistent. sometimes with your workouts yeah. you i go, try to do videos as much as i can because you know reels and tiktok and all that i'm not on tiktok tiktok's not my platform so you got to right. figure you don't out want what the platforms. chinese to see what you're doing man it's just not <laughs> yeah. like there are you're so like... many platforms again right when you get overwhelmed it can breed inaction so i pick what i do well right and i stick with that but uh youtube i do have youtube as well um so like longer videos and things like that you can post there so i'm right. starting to get a little bit better with youtube yeah. But it's a great resource. So are you yeah, so is that kind of where your goal is to mm-hmm. go now? Is to maybe put a YouTube channel up? Well, I have a YouTube channel. Yeah, but I mean to sort of add more consistent content there. Yeah, so more videos, you know, more podcasts. I say I'm going on a podcast tour. So, oh, are you? Nice. Yeah, if you know anybody who yeah. wants a a guest needs a guest. Well, we actually kind of do. We can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Although, yeah, I, get, I mean you're you're getting shit done every day right every so, day every i make day. it man i make it work yeah you do yeah so That's do cool. that instagram lives like right? yeah just try to get on video and help as many people as you can right yep talk That's about cool. your story and 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 build and build your own personal brand yeah 
so which is yeah you are you are your own personal right. brand and you exactly. can make it whatever you want that's cool mm-hmm. right on we just talked about that last week you can make it whatever you are we you did. are you are your brand so make sure yeah. you're representing yourself appropriately right and i think that's where where you being you and you being authentic mm-hmm. and you being the real person um is it comes through and that people are drawn to that yeah, right absolutely that's i cool. mean you got to know yourself like every decision you make should be based off your set of values and what you believe in right and if it's you know, my big thing for this month was if it's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. Like, <laughs> okay. you have to learn to say no. You have to learn to say no? You have to learn to say no. Thanks for saying yes to us. Yeah. And coming on in here. Absolutely. I couldn't say no to you. Well, really? That's nice. Right. I'm going to pat myself on the back right. for that. I feel Thanks good about it. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> thanks. No, we appreciate you coming in. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's really pleasure. enlightening. And, and you, you opening up and sharing your journey with us and, and with, with everybody is, is really inspiring. And I think I Thank really you. appreciate that. You know, and you obviously are willing to show all of the warts and all of the mistakes and everything that goes along with it. And that makes a real human experience, mm-hmm. creates a better human connection. And I think we're all better for that. Absolutely so I think that that's are. excellent. Mm-hmm. So thanks for coming in yeah, and appreciate your time. Thanks for having time. me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was great. So for everybody else, make sure you follow Lil Bit of Fit. Lil Bit of Fit. Lil. And uh, <laughs> where, on all of the stuffs. Except All TikTok, because the hell with the Chinese, really right? Not really on TikTok. But, but other than yeah, that, you Instagram, got YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. YouTube, yep. Facebook, um, and my blog site, littlebitoffit.com. Right. All right. Okay. Well, we've done great, Katie. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you Appreciate for having me. And for everybody else, we'll see you next week. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank you.